there's two main things you have to look at. We'll start with web or print. So what is web? Web will give you RGB colors. It's gonna set up everything. For example, your screen, most likely you don't want it at 72. You probably want it at least 150 or 300. I would suggest 300. And again, that's just for raster effects. You probably don't want to even take a look at bleeds since it's for something that's for your screen, literally. It could be for your phone, websites, something that's just gonna go on screens. And obviously the whole setup will be done in pixels. However, if you're gonna design a poster, something that you're gonna print, well, then you have to choose print. And what's the difference with that? Well, we're no longer taking a look at pixels, first of all, we're gonna take a look at points. And at that point, you most likely will wanna set up your bleed. You can always set that up later, so it's not something we have to worry about that much, but it's something that you want to talk about your printer, by the way. Just in case, I have certain printers that I've worked with where they like their bleed, not to be the typical bleed, but a much bigger bleed. You're taking a look at CMY colors, in this case, not RGB. And once again, I would leave your raster effect that high at 300, it just makes sense. So that's points per inch, by the way. That's what that means. Regardless of what you're doing, I always suggest just starting off with print because print in the end of the day will look good on screens as well. However, if you start off with something for web and you're working with RGB colors, those colors will not always print the same way that you see them on your screen. Again, it does depend on which printer you go to, but for large scale printing, most likely they're gonna be working with CMYK colors. So that's the first thing you wanna look at when you're looking into this. If you just wanna practice or just do something in general, go into print, trust me. And again, that's gonna look good anyways on screen. So it's no big deal and you can go on and mess around with RGB colors anyways, but your main color should be CMYK which we went over in the other episode. Anyways, at this point, we're just gonna start off with letter. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna go on and show you how to create another artboard and even this one mess wrong with it. So we're gonna go and press on create. So that's on the bottom. Once we do that, you're gonna see this. And by the way, my illustrator, you might notice it's a little bit darker than yours if you didn't see my other episodes. If you go into your settings general, I'm gonna go with this really quick because I already showed this, user interface going to brightness, and then you guys can just choose this, dark. That's what I like. I think it looks a lot better. Everything just stands out a lot more. So just going to okay, and there you go. Again, I showed that in another episode, but quickly, I went over it right now. So something that you will want to look into is your trim view. So I'll show you what that is, but we're gonna set up a shortcut right now for it, because that's something that should be set up from the very start. So if you go into view, you're gonna see this option, trim view, and this trim view is what you guys want to see because that's your finished product. So what we want to do is just set up a really quick shortcut for this, and it can be any key binding on your keyboard. So in order to set that up, we're gonna go on into edit, in edit, scroll all the way down, you guys are gonna see this, keyboard shortcuts, go right into it. And right here, you're gonna go on into not tools, but menu commands. Then from here, look for that trim. So here's my trim view. And we're gonna go on and select anything that you guys like. In this case, I'm gonna go on and select this. And that's gonna be my shortcut. So let me just zoom in. So that's my shortcut on my keyboard. I could put like the number one, number two, whatever you guys like to put your shortcut, go ahead and do it then press OK. You guys can name this, so Trim View, and there we go. So every time you press that, you're gonna go into Trim View, and I'll show you what that does right now. So right now we have this artboard, and let's say we create a shape. So let's start off with the basics. This shape right here. So this is a rectangle, and I'm just gonna make one big one. We're gonna do the fill. So for the fill, that's on this side. Just click right here, and that's gonna be the inside. That's the inside color. So in your swatches on the right hand side, you guys can choose any color. Let's choose that for now. And whatever is inside your white space, your artboard, that's what's gonna show up once you print this out on your screen, once you export it. Anything outside of it, which is this over here, it's not gonna show up. So sometimes this gets in the way because maybe we don't wanna trim it. We just wanna place it like so and just leave it as is. So right now, if I just click out of it, click anywhere, and then just press 
the shortcut that you guys just made, it's gonna show you exactly that. It won't show you the whole thing, it's just gonna show you exactly what's gonna be printed. So I'm gonna press that again. So what I'm doing is going to view basically, and I'm doing trim view. So once I do that, you guys are gonna see exactly what you're gonna export once this document's done. So I'm gonna take that out again. And again, we made that shortcut on our keyboard, so we can always just go in between those two things. Now before we keep going, we're gonna look into all these options that you guys have up here. You might not have these. So on the top, going to Window, Workspace, and your Workspace. Usually what you want is Essentials Classic. In Essentials Classic, you're gonna get the main stuff. For example, we just did Painting right here. You wanna switch it up, so again, Window, Workspace, Painting, are gonna see the swatches right away here. It's not that we can't get the swatches in any other workspace, but they are here already. And we can customize your own workspace as well. So if you go into Window, Workspace, you're gonna see this. New Workspace, and you can manage your workspaces. So you can create your own and customize it as much as you like. However, just to keep this simple for you guys, we're gonna be mainly working on Essentials Classic. And that's because with Essentials Classic, I'll show you the difference between that and Essentials. Essentials makes it look a lot cleaner, but there's a lot of information missing that we need, especially when you're learning, you need that information. So we're gonna go into Window, go into Essentials Classic. You guys are gonna see all this information on the top. It's gonna help us out with a bunch of shortcuts. We can actually view stuff that you might not see right away. So under Window, if you wanna view your swatches, it's gonna be right here. So you guys can go right into your swatches. So that's gonna be right here. You guys can just pull those up if you like. However, if you're under this essentials, they're gonna be on the right hand side anyways. So they're gonna be right here. So if I click on them, I'm gonna see my swatches. So that's why I like essentials. It has all the basics pretty much. And then if you have a lot of text that you're messing around with, well then you're gonna go into window workspace and just go into typography because it's gonna focus on your typography. So it's gonna come up with this stuff right here. Which again, under Essentials, we can get to that, but it's good to just change around your layouts. So we're gonna go into Essentials Classic again. By the way, you don't need to go every single time to Window and just change your workspace from there. You can do it all the way from the top right-hand side of your screen. You will see this right here, Switch Workspace, and you can just change it from here. So there's various ways to do this, and in Illustrator, there's a ton of ways to do the same thing which makes it easier. But anyways, let's just go back into our artworks because we need to get to know those before we even get going. So this is our artwork and I told you guys we would be changing it. So to change our artboard size or create others within the same thing, you do have this option here for artboards. Just click on it. And then from here, you guys can make it any size you like. So I can go on and make it like that. If you have a specific size that you need your artboard to be at, look up here. You're gonna see the size that you can make this at. If you don't really have a good idea just yet, we'll go on and make whichever size and you can create other artboards. Just click and hold and drop another one and you guys can make as many as you like. So within each artboard, you guys can draw, create anything else. You guys can export each artboard separately and each one could be a different project. We can also delete your artboards just by clicking here on artboards again, select your artboard, just hit delete, select your artboard, select delete, and there you go. So again, these are two artboards. We're gonna mess around with two artboards just for this example, but that's the basics that goes into your artboards. That's how you guys can delete them, create them, and right now, your shapes. Let's go right into your shapes. So we got this shape right here that we just made. And there's lots of other shapes that you guys can make. So don't worry about it. I'll get to that in just two seconds. So right now we have this shape and we have this outline as a black outline. If you take a look on your left hand side, you guys can see the outline is black. The inside is this color. So if you click here, you guys can change the color of your outline. Or if you don't want an outline, you guys can just go on and click here, none. So we click back. And there we go, it's just the color without any outline. Let's just click back, we want the outline back. So that we'll click on it, and then you guys are gonna see this color picker. So we just pick any color for now. I'm gonna go with red so you guys can see that outline a little bit more. And there it is, so we have that outline. We can mess around with the thickness of that outline. It's gonna be strokes, appearance. 
So we can go one, right now it's just one point. Let's just make it a hundred. And that's how thick that's gonna be. We can make it eight. It's gonna go down like so. And 18, for example, that's my outline stroke. I'm gonna change the color because it's a little bit harder on my eyes. Let's just go with a black and there you go. So again, you guys can put in the outline, not have an outline. Most of your projects, you guys are not gonna have an outline. So that's how you guys can take that out. Now there's lots of shapes right here. For example, if you choose this one, you can make it a square and all that. But if you really want a square and you guys want it the easy way, we'll delete this shape, select the square again. That's on the top left hand side. We're gonna select that. What you're gonna do is just click on your artboard, then hold shift and it's gonna make a square for you. So as long as you press shift, it's gonna keep this as a square. And you guys can make it as big or small as you want. So if you wanna keep the size that it is and not morph it, you guys wanna press that shift. Now, when you want to mess around with the shape a little bit, always, always select on the top left hand side. See this, select this, then go on. You guys can mess around with the shape itself. So you guys could morph it to be another shape. To go back on any action that you do, press Command Z. That's gonna take you back. If I press Shift and I go on and press on any of these anchors, it's gonna keep my shape as is and I can make it bigger or smaller. So it's very important to know that, that you can do that without messing around with your shape. And if you do wanna mess around with your shape, make it skinnier, just don't press Shift. But let me just go back, Command Z. If I wanna keep the shape, I can just press Shift on my keyboard then get any anchor, make it bigger. So that's gonna keep it consistent throughout. All right, so there's much more shapes into this. So up here, if you guys wanna choose other shapes, just do a right click, or if you guys have a trackpad, two fingers for your right click, and then there's all these other shapes that you guys can do. So go on with the rounded rectangle, you guys can do ellipse tool, a uh, star, Let's just go throughout each one actually, just to show you how to handle each one of these. So if I'm making a rounded one, you guys will see this, and then I can just select up here again, the selection tool, which is V. So get used to the shortcuts by the way, but I'm just showing you the long way, just so you guys can get used to it. But this is what I'm selecting. Shortcut would be the letter V. And then if you grab this on the corner, you guys can make it more round or less round or not rounded at all sharp edges. So you guys can always mess around with that. Now if you're thinking, well, what happens if you made a square already and you want that to have rounded edges? So I made this one from before. You can actually make it have rounded edges already. So see this right here? You can make, make it have rounded edges. I can make it more round and more round and even up to a circle. So that's how round you can go with any shape. So whether I started with just a rectangle or round it, I can always switch up between the two. And remember the circle I just made? Well, we do have that shape here as well. So in order to make a perfect circle in here, all we have to do is just click, press shift. It's gonna be a perfect circle. If you don't want a perfect circle, just press and make it whichever shape you want. So you guys can make it like so and just move it around. If you wanna keep it as a perfect circle, just like a perfect square, just hold on to shift and you guys can just make this as big or small as you need. Now let's keep looking at your shapes. We're gonna go into the next one. So on this next one, same deal. We're just gonna create one to move it around. We have to select this and there you go. And on the sides, you guys wanna flip this without clicking anywhere, just scroll over it. So here on the side and you guys can just move it and there we go. All right, so this is a polygon, but what happens if you want to put more sides or less sides? You guys can actually mess around with that quite a bit. And that's just using your arrows on your keyboard. So let's just choose this for now. So this polygon that we chose. So it's on the left hand side of our screen. Select it, start making it. And as you make it, press your arrows on your keyboard. So press the up and down arrow. So if you press down, you guys can make it all the way to a triangle. If you press your up arrow on your keyboard, you guys can add more and more sides to this. More and more sides. So let me just zoom in to show you what I'm doing exactly. So to add sides or take out sides, it's your 
arrows that go up or down on your keyboard. So down arrow, we'll take it down all the way up to a triangle. Up arrow, we'll add more sides to it, all the way up to almost a circle, basically. And we can take down more or less less sides to make it like so, or just leave it as is. So again, within the one shape that we chose, we can make various shapes from it. And just by pressing V, we can just grab the side, shift, and make this bigger. Now to go through your artboard, so just click anywhere, press shift and hold on to shift. And you guys see this little hand? Well, that's gonna help you if you click through, just move around your artboard itself. So that's something you guys are gonna want to do. You also want to zoom in and zoom out. For that, all you guys have to do is just press command minus, command plus. You guys can zoom in and out. If you have a trackpad, it's kind of like on an iPad. So just like in an iPad, you guys can zoom out by pinching. You guys can do the same thing on a trackpad if you have one. So just pinch and that's gonna make you zoom out or just go the other way and you guys can zoom in. And then just hold on to your space bar and then just click and drag in order to get through your artboard. Of course, these are shortcuts. You do have this hand right here, which you guys can select on the left hand side. And that's this hand. So you guys can just go throughout your artboard and just move throughout it especially when you're making small things right here. So if you wanna make any incisions here, draw something really small, we would need to do this just to go around the entire board. We're gonna press V to get this back. And the last shape that we're gonna take a look at is a star. So on, again, on the left-hand side, you guys are gonna right-click on it or just with two fingers on your trackpad and then choose star tool. Zoom out so you guys can see what's gonna happen. We're gonna make a perfect star. So let me just get rid of some of this stuff first. So I'm gonna select it, press delete. There we go. Select the star once again. And here we go. I'm gonna start making it. I'm gonna hold on to shift, just so you go straight, ish. Then I'm gonna move it down. I'm moving it down by pressing V. And I selected this, the selection tool, so I can actually move this around. And then that's my star. However, just like the other shapes, you guys can mess around with the star and have more points to it or less. So we're gonna select the star again. And then when we're making this star, press your up or down arrows on your keyboard. So if you press down, it's gonna take out more points from the star until it gets to this shape. Or press your up arrow and your star can have various points to make it a sun. And I'm not really sure up to how many points you guys can make. I don't know exactly. I've never tried to go to the max, but you guys can go on and make it like so. So these are the two shapes that you guys can make. And of course you guys can take down the points. So you don't need that many points. You guys can choose exactly how many points you guys want in your star. Obviously the more you make, the more of a uh, sun it starts becoming just because of all the points. We're just gonna leave that one as is right there. And those are the different types of stars that we guys can make right here. And if you're wondering, can you make these edges rounded? Yes, you can. Just like a square, just like any other one. First of all, select this or press V on your keyboard. Select the star. So I'm gonna zoom in and press this. Then just go down on it and I'm gonna make that edge circular. Same goes here. I can make this more circular and let's just go full on circular. So there you go. So we can meet these rounded edges on a star as well. So once again, let's say you guys are making a really cool design where you guys have all these stars everywhere and you're making it like so, but it would be kind of useless to cut the star that's out of, goes beyond the borders. Well, that's what I'm telling you to press the shortcut key that we made so you guys can view exactly how it's gonna print out. It's gonna print out like so. And this is how you guys are gonna look at it. So again, I'm just going to view, and I'm going to trim view. But I already have a shortcut set up for that on my keyboard, so I can just toggle between the two. But anyways, these are really, really quick introduction into shapes, into Illustrator. We're gonna go into the next episode. We will get even more into depth into Illustrator so you guys can have a good handle how to use this tool. But as far as this video goes, we're all done. If you guys have any comments, questions, you guys can write down here in the comments area. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you.